take up class 8 chapter, that is chapter number 2, microorganisms. What are microorganisms? Micro word stands for small, that is very small. And organism word stands for living creatures. So that means microorganisms are those organisms, those living creatures that are very small that cannot be seen up with naked eye. Naked eye means that we need certain aids like microscope to see or to make these organisms visible. That thing is known as microorganisms. Microorganisms, basically the study of this microorganisms, the branch of science that involves the study of microorganisms is known as micro biology and the person who is studying this microorganism or they are studying about microorganism or they are studying about microbiology they are known as microbiologists see these microorganisms are divided into various categories depending upon their various characteristics the general characteristics of microorganisms and now what are these general characteristics what general characteristics can general characteristics Either microorganisms are unicellular or multicellular. Now, what is the meaning of unicellular? Uni means single, and cellular means from cells. So, when the organism is made up of only single cell, that is known as unicellular organism, and when we are talking about multi, multi stands for many and cellular again stands for cells so when the organism is made up of many cells that organism is known as multicellular organism the next thing is that is nutrition that how microorganisms follow which mode of nutrition now that mode are autotrophic either they are autotrophs then we have heterotrophic. Now what is autotrophic? Auto means cell and trophic words resemble nutrition. So those organisms or those microorganisms that make their food by themselves like that means green plants they have green pigment chlorophyll to make their food. Same way there are certain organisms that is algae. The very first example is algae that has the pigments chlorophyll. They are resembling like green plants only that make their own food. So that microorganisms are basically mimicking the green plants. Now when I am talking about heterotropic mode of nutrition. Hetero means they obtain ready made food or they are depending upon autotrophic. That means they are depending upon autotrophs for the nutrition or they are dependent upon ready-made food that is prepared by autotrophs that is known as heterotrophic mode of nutrition. Next mode of nutrition is saprotrophic. Sapro words resembles the organism that feed on dead and decaying organism. Dead and decaying organism like plants and animals that get dead and decayed and get trapped into the soil. That organism that feed on the dead and decaying plants and animals or dead and decaying material, that organic material that are known as saprotrophic mode of nutrition. Next is parasitic mode of nutrition. Parasitic words too needs to be understood for that you need to understand two terms. That is a parasite and a host. Now what is host and parasite? Host is that organism that actually allow this parasite or an organism to live inside or on the body of the host and derive nutrition to take up the survival of this parasite. That means this parasite is organism that the host ke upar ya uske under, inside rehkar, apna nutrition derive karta hai and apna nutrition derive karega aur apna survival ko carry forward karega. So parasite is that organism that reside on the host for inside to derive.
the Lyapertz equation, where the host is that organism that actually allow this parasite to live on or above this so that it can give nutrition and the parasite can make its existence possible. Beneficial as well as harmful role. If one side they are playing very important role, 
in our daily life like in agriculture, in industries and many other things. On the other hand, it is playing another role as a pathogen when it is causing a disease. So on that basis, I am talking about first the beneficial aspects of microorganism in agriculture industries to increase the fertility of soil. We are using fertilizers, in fact I should say biofertilizers. That are the basic living organism that we are using as a biofertilizers. Economic importance I am taking about antibiotics. Antibiotics actually are those uh, substances or chemicals that are basically prescribed by doctors in the form of tablets or medicines. What actually antibiotic is? Antibiotic are those medicines that are used to treat the disease causing organism or they are made against that disease causing microorganism so that they can kill that organism that is causing disease. The very first antibiotic discovered from a fungus, Penicillium mutator, the antibiotic was named as Penicillin that played a huge role in treatment in medicinal. If I am talking about industries, leather industry, alcohol industries, when we are making about beer, whiskies, fermentation industry, syrup industry, industries, they are using this all stuff of microorganism to let this process move forward. Not only this, we have very wide range of role in our daily life like I told about curd. I, if I talk about yeast, baker's yeast that we use in baking. So that are very good examples of these microorganisms. Now, on the basis of these certain characteristics I told you that they are living in this habitat or they are having uh, the capability to survive in unfavorable conditions or they are economically important in one or the other field, the microorganisms are classified on the basis of these general characteristics. Even the reproduction aspects that I will be coming up later up, the microorganisms are classified into certain categories. Number one is bacteria, number two is fungi, then algae, protozoa and virus. If I am talking about bacteria, fungi, algae, protozoa and virus, they all have that distinction characteristics. Then what are distinct characteristics about them? If I am talking about bacteria, Bacteria can be unicellular or multicellular organism. They are found in a wide range of habitat, soil, air, everywhere in fact, in a food also. Whereas I am talking about fungi, they have different mode of nutrition also. They can be filamentous, they produce, reproduce by various other methods. Whereas algae, they are just like green plants, filamentous or branched. They actually have a role to prepare their own food, hence they follow the mode of nutrition or the trophic. Protozoa, they are organisms that do not possess cell wall and in fact they are responsible for causing various diseases also, protozoan diseases. Then I am talking about viruses. Out of these four, the virus is not even characterized into living or non-living. Actually they are the connecting link between living and non-living. So that is why we don't say that they are true living organisms. Reason being, virus has a very special characteristics that until and unless if this is host and if I am talking about this is virus this virus has no life cycle outside this host that means this virus needs a host to be active usko apne life ki existence dene ke liye host ki zarurat hai why? Because virus ke paas apna koi multiplication mode tab tak nahi hoga jab tak uske paas koi host available nahi hoga wo is host ki machinery ko use karke apne aap ko multiply karega aur apna number increase karega. Bohat common example leta hai common cold. Aapko ek halka sa common cold, common human influenza virus se hota hai. Actually why we say ki wo communicable hai ki don't use other's handkerchiefs or egg to say utensils must use kar liye. Reason being ki host jo hai, once you touch that handkerchief that is contaminated with the virus of another people, person. What you will do? That will, if that gets into your body, that virus will go further multiply in your body and that will cause common cold in your body also. Whereas if I am talking about transmitting to you to another third person, the same mode of transmission can be so virus has no existence until and unless it don't, it don't have any host to use its machinery. Now next topic to be taken up is the reproduction. 
that is the various methods binary fission fragmentation spore formation and bud there are many methods of actually reproduction but <coughs> classified microorganisms over here most of them follows up these type of organisms these type of organisms that means if i am talking about binary fission first in detail i will be telling you each and every aspect binary fission binary means two and fission means the division binary means two two parts mein divide hona fission ka matlab hai breakage hona divide hona so if i am talking about binary fission do parts ke andar do cells ke andar divide hona usse hum binary fission kehte hain i will make up the diagram make the diagrams and then explain you in detail if i am talking about fragmentation fragmentation is that process fragment means a segment when we are breaking the organism or dividing or following that mode of reproduction in which the organism is divided into various segments and then the multiple copies are generated spore formation spore formation is basic that method where the spore like structure that i told you about cells for unfavorable condition these spores small small single minute microscopic structures are released in form of spores it is common in case of fungus that leads to the method of reproduction and budding budding means a small outgrowth in the form of small outgrowth we are actually these organisms are actually multiplying as a form of from the parent body only in the form of small outgrowth so uh, in next lecture we will be taking up this detail of these all methods so taking up the reproduction characteristic of microorganism microorganism forms of various ways for multiplying and that very first method can be binary fission for example if i'm talking about bacteria bacteria is multiplying following one of the methods that is binary fission now what is binary fission binary means two and fission means divide or breakage so that means this is that mode of reproduction in which the organism the bacteria if i am taking up example that divided into two cells for example if this is bacteria having its genetic material inside it what happens actually this bacteria starts dividing how the genetic material also start extending the cell also start extending and as a result now they make up a furrow like material and start dividing now this genetic material this is also extending so that the cell when divides into two halves that is into binary part the one part this and another part this the both have the proper amount of genetic material proper genetic information as well as the content of the bacteria that is the fluid filled with cell that is cytoplasm as a result one cell this and another cell this we get two set of daughter cell bacteria from this one parent cell so this parent cell dividing by binary fission get divided into two daughter cells the second method i am taking up is budding budding is that process where the parent cell itself let a small outgrowth from the body and that got that outgrowth is known as bud that means if i am talking about yeast this is parent cell this parent cell let this small outgrowth to develop from its body this small outgrowth is known as bud and this bud after growing up to certain limit get detached from this parent body and when it gets separated from this parent body it grow individually as a proper new individual so this process is basically known as budding the example is in case of yeast if i am talking about the next method that is spore formation spore is actually as i already told you it is a small microscopic structures that are formed in case of fungus
focus it is very good example that suppose these small microscopic structures are formed that lead to multiple formation and these spores get dispersed to various different locations and start germinating over there when the suitable favorable conditions get uh, provided to them then they start developing as a new individual so this is in case of spores i am giving you a very good example of bread mold that is rhizopus fungus what actually happens this rhizopus fungus having this spore sap that consists of various spores this get break down and these spores get moved out and get dispersed by various agents like wind insect or other things and this will get dispersed and wherever it will get settled down it will stop growing up at that place the fourth method i am talking about is that is fragmentation fragmentation fragment means in a segment so when the individual is divided into various segments and then individual segment divided grows up as a new individual that is known as fragmentation for example if this is a fragment of organism and if i divide it into these parts this is segment number 1 2 3 what will happen actually now this first part second part and third segment do not get vanished or finished up they will actually what they will do this one segment will start growing up as a proper new individual fully developed and second segment will itself start growing as a proper new individual and third segment will start growing naturally as a new individual so that means from each segment we get up as a new individual is Born. So these are all the methods of reproduction. That means how the organism actually multiply their number. So these are various important methods that is majorly adopted by various microorganisms. So rest of the topic and about the economic importance we will be taking up in the next picture.